How's it going, everyone? Uh, Suffer here once again, and I'm going to bring you the kind of feedback and perspective of the ice gauntlet. Um, I did a previous video on the fire staff, so please take a look at that as it will most likely be paired with the ice gauntlet as your typical mage build. Uh, so with that being said, let's go ahead and dive into it. Um, the attributes play an important part, just like the fire staff. Um, a lot of these milestones and in intelligence just give general damage, but one thing to watch out for is that 200 points, you get 10 mana after a dodge roll. So, as you can see here, I'm going to use a couple abilities, and, you know, lo and behold, I've done three, and I'm almost out of mana. So how do I get that back? There are some skills that generate mana, however, that 200 point threshold is really big. Watch I dodge, I get 10 mana. I dodge again, I get another 10 mana. And I can keep doing this process over and over. So playing around the dodge, uh, 10 mana after a dodge mechanic is something that all casters are going to have to get used to. There are some tips and tricks that you can do to dodging, um, like with the fire staff uh, in that video I showed it, but you can dodge and kind of weapon swap to get some movement speed and space your dodging and your stamina, but I'll go over a full mechanics uh, overlook for mages video later, so be sure to check out for that one if you want all the tips and tricks that's going to make you into like one of the, you know, a top PvPer. Uh, so, Back to the Ice Gauntlet, um, we play around this 10 mana dodge uh, ability, and then we'll actually look at the uh, skills here. And so what we'll do is we'll look at the abilities, the actual abilities, and any abilities that require some sort of mechanical understanding of it. I'm not going to cover abilities like you do more crit damage when you hit with a frost spell, because that's very obvious. Everyone knows these are going to be good abilities. You're going to take them no matter, no matter what. Um, so, once again, looking at the way Ice Gauntlet plays and how it feels versus just a particular talent build. Uh, so, we'll dive in here. Uh, Wind Chill, this is ability that you channel in front of you. It pushes people back and does damage. Uh, it takes three seconds to channel. The damage is not very high. So, unless that changes from the beta, I probably would not recommend taking this ability. Uh, none of the sub talents for it do anything in particular so it just kind of seems like a dead slot at the moment uh, you can try it and see how you feel on it um, but for me it feels a little clunky and like you're stuck in place channeling some low damage spell which is not ideal when you could just be doing something else that's more value uh, the next ability is going to be ice spikes i had a lot of trouble with this one as well it seems to shoot a pillar of ice in front of you to about like eight meters which would be right there and the hard part about this is getting in that sweet spot range to hit somebody, which would be right here. And you also have to left click mouse button to erupt the spike while it's traveling on its trail in order to get maximum damage. If you do erupt it right on top of them, they will take the extra damage and some more damage from the split ability in the final tier of it, which makes it shoot out shards like to the right and left of uh, six meters. So it can hit, it just seems to be very picky and not reliable. So in a high pressured situation like one-on-one, -on -one, the odds of you being able to hit this ice spike is going to be really low. If you do hit it, it will hit hard, but I think personally there might be some better options, so we'll go over some of those first. Um, ice Storm would be the next ability. This is a fantastic ability. Uh, it does damage in an AoE range, and it's very far, as you can see over here. I'm able to cast it quite a distance. Um, so what it's going to do is it's going to damage and slow opponents in there. And some of the other talents increase the damage and lower the mana cost, but the final talent is really big. And this one shines a lot in the, uh, the wars, right? It's going to do 10% more damage for every person caught in the storm. So that turns the ice storm into like a deadly blizzard. If you hit a clump of like 10 to 15 players, they are going to feel it. Like, it's really going to hurt. They're going to be like screaming to get out of this thing. Um, I've seen several war VODs where people are just like, we can't get past the ice storms. They're killing us. It does so much damage. Like, it's crazy. So uh, people that are clumped up and you can punish enemies that are, you know, we'll call them not as experienced. You know, if they're setting in a pile of 15, 20, that's kind of on them. And it really shreds and punishes that. Uh, so... Great ability there, I would highly recommend that one. 
Uh, the other ability on the right side tree, this is going to be the builder tree, ice shower seems to have a lot of practical uses. Uh, so it's going to put a small wall of ice in front of you that when people pass through it with some of the other talents, they're going to get movement speed. It's going to last longer. It's going to reduce the armor of enemies that pass through it. Uh, any enemy that goes through this will get slowed and rooted for one second. Uh, so when they are rooted, it will actually stop their charge animation. So for example, if I were to burn out into a frost wall or the ice shower, I would actually get rooted in place where that shower was and stop the momentum of my charge. So this is good to keep in mind. Um, I guess the only thing that can get through this for some reason is the shield bash charge from tanks. I'm not sure why they're able to get through the ice wall, uh, but great axe users also get stuck when they charge as well. So that's a very powerful defensive option, and it's not one that I'm running right now, but it is something that you're going to want a few of these mages having this ice shower ability in the war. It's definitely a tide changer in terms of uh, utility. Uh, the next ability that we will cover is Ice Pylon. And this ability is fun. I did not like it at first, uh, but the more I played with it, the uh, the better it got for me, especially in small skirmishes and 1v1s. Um, so you can read the basic abilities on it, but it essentially is a turret that shoots. Uh, when it shoots, there are a few mechanics for it. Uh, the, the main one is when you dodge, uh, when you're at full stamina, your pylon is going to get faster attack speed, so he is going to do a lot more damage. Uh, the other one would be the duration of it is increased, so whenever it hits a shot. So when it's up and shooting, it takes a very long time for it to go away. So theoretically, if the pylon is shooting something, it will be there almost permanently. There is some sort of hard timer that seems to be present. Like even if my pylon is shooting constantly, it does seem to run out eventually. I don't know why that is. It, theoretically, it should be up forever. It doesn't state that, but uh, regardless, just be aware that that is a thing. Um, but the uh, final talent in the builder tree would just increase the life of that pylon and the radius of the frost benefits you get from it. Um, there are talents increase your movement speed and mana regeneration while within those zones. Mana I didn't find to be too useful, but the movement speed really was. Um, but in addition to that, it doubles the health of the pylon, which makes it kind of tanky and hard for people to kill. So it's going to be a really powerful tool to just drop down. And in my opinion, enemies are forced to go and kill this thing. And if they don't, they're going to be taking 50% weapon damage per shot, which two shots is going to be like a full auto attack on them, which is humongous. Plus dodging at full movement speed is going to increase the damage of or the fire rate of that thing so as you can see this is a great tool for defending a point one-on-one -on -one. uh it's also a great skirmish or one-on-one -on -one dueling tool 2v2 3v3 anything of that nature uh the last ability we'll go over is entombed and this is your go-to defensive option option uh what it's going to do is it's going to put you in a nice block and you can have the option to wait and time it out which it lasts quite a while it does have a health bar and it's destructible However, you can hit left click to explode and push back enemies. And this actually hits really hard. I've crit tanks for 1500 plus with this, uh, which is almost much as a fireball. Uh, so exploding is really nice and it also pushes people back, which allows you to dodge and then maybe burn out to a different area so that you can escape and kind of get some distance. Um, in addition to that, there's some ice talents um, in the tree, which you may have to play around mechanically which is every time you cast an ice ability, you're going to get Fortify. There's also that same ability on the Entomb when you break out, and Entomb will clear all your debuffs. This is a very important ability. When you're in a war, you're going to get poisoned and all kinds of sort of things. Tap Ice Block, and you're completely clear of all that. Not to mention, in PvE, it did seem to get rid of a lot of mechanics, specifically in Lazarus uh, uh, Zone it kind of like negated some of the boss mechanics that would put big debuffs on you. You could just clear these off and kind of play the game however you wanted. Maybe that'll be a fix in the future, but we'll see for now. Um, but the only other thing to be aware of would be this uh, cooldowns when casting in a frost area. So ideally, 
if you are casting frost spells, you want to be on top of your pylon. Because if I do cast my ice shower while I'm standing in the pylon's frost, I will get lower cooldown on that. Uh, so that would be another mechanic that you may want to play around. Um, beyond that, there are some damage talents and things of that nature. Uh, this one was a very interesting one, Heavy Freeze. We tried it out. It seemed okay. Uh, so what it does is when someone's in an ice storm, if you auto attack them with a fully charged shot, they get rooted for one second. So it was like a mini ice shower. It seemed decent, but I don't know how much like application it actually has. From my experience, you tend to put out your pylon, throw out your ice storm and maybe ice block for damage, and then you're back into fire staff. Like I don't spend much time auto attacking or heavy attacking somebody with the ice gauntlet. Uh, so that's uh, probably something of note. Ice gauntlet seems to be like a cooldown only ability, whereas fire staff would be your main damage and auto attacker, um, as a lot of the abilities with fire staff tend to generate cooldown for you. All right, well, I hope everything there helps you see a little bit of the perspective of how the Ice Mage plays and what it wants to do. And uh, if you guys have any further questions, feel free to comment down below or ask anything. And I'll try to update these guides and builds along with some PvP-related stuff as the game gets closer to launch. Thanks again, and see you guys in the next video.